Okay. So, All right, so this was my proving ground. I think it's got almost everything I need. I just wanted to show you one nice non-destructive editing thing with this layer, this overlay layer that's just covering everything. I can always just use this to do big dodge and burns as well. So let me see, change it to overlay. So I can just use my my uh, dodge and burn tools. I'm going to take the exposure down, really big brush. I'm on dodge right now. Is there anything I want to just brighten up in this landscape? Like maybe the edges of the temple there. Maybe the top of the, the foreground here. Remember, I'm not actually hitting the landscape. I can even do it on top of my creature. I'm doing it on this non-destructive layer. Right. And then you can burn in areas. So this is another way you can kind of emphasize cast shadows. Or darken around your creature within reason. and just make it more dramatic in general. Okay, but I might have overdone that a little bit, and I often do, and what's great is then you can take the opacity of it down, and you can see how much those overlay layers matter, right? And if you think you overdid it, you can always erase away at low opacities, because it's non-destructive. You're not going to hurt any of your actual pixels. Yeah, so now I think I like all of the changes it made. Now, sometimes doing all that careful dodging and burning might improve your landscape, right? So you can even see if this is, this is better than your landscape was when you first submitted it, because now you have even a more careful adjustment of your atmosphere and of your dodge and burn and your levels but the problem is there's a gap in here that's for my creature that's maybe a little weird so i'm just going to save this and submit it as my proving ground so make sure my creature's turned on all the different layers they're different opacities yeah you can see how they're all helping might even want a little bit more of this, a little bit more dramatic for the lighting. Okay, now I save it obviously as my PSD. It's right there. Now I'm going to save it as a JPEG. So Photoshop file, save a copy. If you're in Photo P, you're going to say export as, and you want it to be a JPEG because we're filling an entire rectangle here. Also, make sure you've cropped to it. And I'd already saved it to my desktop. Now I'm just replacing it. So this is my CreatureScape JPEG right here. It's now updated just saved right now so now i go to canvas and how do we submit this project our first proving ground
we go into the class, we go to assignments, we go to proving ground number one and where we post it. And posting the image is the first part of the criteria. Now we got to do the other parts of the criteria. So I haven't started one yet, so I'm going to go run right underneath directions and I'm going to post my image. That's where it starts. Shrink it down a little. And remember, I said keep it open in Photoshop so you can see the image size, right? So now underneath it, I need to write the pixel dimensions. But I don't do it by just saying this many pixels by this many pixels. I want to make sure I make sense of this data. So I go to, in Photoshop, I go to image, image size so I can see the data. It's right there. Make sure it's in inches and that you see the resolution. And I want you to uncheck resample and set the resolution at 300. Wherever it was, set it at 300. And then you're going to write those dimensions. So I'm going to say 19.07 inches. You can abbreviate inches with uh, quotation marks. By, with an X, 14.47 point four seven three inches this is for mine right and then you have to say at what resolution 300 pixels per inch why did i change it from 350 to 300 that's because 300 is the print standard so i want to see exactly using the standard minimum printing uh, what inches would this print at Okay, and then you have to define it. So what does this mean if it's, actually I don't like the at symbol as much as just saying at. Um, what does 19 inches by 14 inches at 300 pixels per inch means? It means it is good enough for print resolution. Now what if my image, I've already saved it so I'm safe, but what if it looked more like this. So I just am really going to cut its memory down from 71 megabytes to 5 megabytes. But because I crop down to it, it still looks good on the screen, but if I go to image, image size, now if I set it to inches and I uncheck resample and I put in 300, if it is 5 inches by 4 inches, basically, at 300, is that print resolution? No, not by the definitions of this class, right? Because we want our images to be at least what size physically? 8 by 10. 8 by 10. So if it's smaller than 8 by 10 at 300, then you're going to change the 300 to 72. Because 72 is standard screen resolution. So it's helping you make sense of this data, what this data means, which is going to be necessary when we print. So this is like an alternate reality with a different file. But this would be 21.583 inches by 16.375 inches at 72 pixels per inch, which is always PPI. And that would be screen resolution. But, I'm going to resample it again just to show you, but if it's something like 69 inches by 52 inches at 72, that's not screen resolution. Because if I, uh, if I actually did that, <laughs> I'm really messing with my image now. And I forced this to be 72, right? Now it's back up to 53 megabytes, but I just lost all my pixel quality because I made the computer make up all these pixels. So they're going to be really kind of blurry now. 
But at that image size, if that's what you have, you want to always uncheck resample and see what it is at 300. Because that's bigger than 8 by 10 at 300. So that's not screen resolution. That's good enough for print resolution. I know all that's confusing, but kind of it's making sense of your understanding of the data. And the more resolution you have, the better. So that is the first criteria. You meet the criteria whether it's tiny in screen resolution or whether it's a decent print resolution. You just need to identify it correctly. So we have now done the first two rubrics. We've made sense of the data. We've accurately identified the pixels per inch and the physical format in inches. And we've identified which of the two main types of digital art resolution my creature scape is sized for. Mine is sized for printing. Okay, then we did the second part of it. We put our PNG creature onto our landscape background in a way that used a common light direction and accommodated for the angle of the creature's anatomy. Right? So mine should get full credit for both of these so far. The last one is we have to explain how your creature interacts with its environment. And to get full marks, we want to offer an exclamation in not like crazy made up words, right? It should communicate to an audience that identifies obvious practical problems your creature would deal with in its environment. So looking at my creature, I'm going to extend this a little bit. Now I can start to look for seemingly unrelated connections, right? Novel problems in familiar terms. So this creature has this little flower on the back of his head. It seems like that would help with camouflage, but only if most of it's buried. This environment has these weird flowers popping out and it's got these weird kind of cones. So I'm thinking these might be the nests, these kind of rock nesting things or the eggs might be odd shapes. And this creature is mostly like kind of a swamp creature. So let's give it a name. The Dingle Buck. Yeah, let's I see. That. I like Dingle, but Buck makes me think I too much bop. like a deer. A bop. Yeah, like yes. Bop. <clears throat> so let's see. What kind of bird? There's the blue-footed booby. So yeah, I'll, I'll say the, the Dingle. The Dingle booby. The Dingle booby. <laughs> I'm going to stop. Is... Let's see, a, uh, a flightless <laughs> migratory bird that walks long distances. And you don't need to worry about your spelling. You don't need to write for very long. You just want to try to describe how it integrates into its environment. That walks long distances in order to lay eggs in the humid, humidest of environments. <laughs> it is large and powerful, yet depends on burrowing to hide from predators. And uses, yes, its unique head protrusion <laughs> to camouflage. This is your first draft of this kind of thing, but you're, it's showing that you're thinking about it. I've never once spelled camouflage correctly in my life. Depends on burrowing to hide from predators and uses its unique head protrusion to, for camouflage. I should say while. Wow. Now let's get to those teeth. Yeah, so exactly. So things that seem obvious, like to address. What does it eat, right? It preys on or... Let's see, while 